Everybody, you are listening to the High Sessions Hawaii podcast. We talk about everything local and beyond. Uh, my name is Devin Nekoba. I am one of the hosts, along with Mr. John Yamasato over there, Mr. Kyle Shimabukuro right here. Uh, before we begin, we've got to remind all of our listeners of all the ways they can stay in touch with the show. We've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all at High Sessions. Also, you got a little bit of SoundCloud, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts as well. And don't forget, by the way, when you're on the Apple Podcast, you rate us five stars, please. Cool. Uh, finally, you can email us at highsessions at yahoo.com. If you'd like to help the show, get more music on our channel, please go to patreon.com and donate there. You can be more involved with the show and help determine who and what is filmed. If this sounds exactly like how John says it normally, it's because I'm basically reading it off his paper. Um, you can check out one of our sponsors, Kupu Kupu Landscaping. They are landscape architects. They create a landscape not that's not only good looking, but multifunctional. Kyle can uh, vouch for it, as can John, because a lot of their clients have been uh, signing up for that. Uh, service, they service the entire island of Oahu, and you can call Kevin Yokomura, 808-722-8685 for a free estimate, or go to kupukupulandscaping.com. They're hiring $15 an hour right now, too, so I want to check that out. Um, also want to thank our friends from Fort River Market. They always provide us with owner grinds. Uh, Todd is trying to digest his uh, Kahlua pig right now. <laughs> you can check me out on uh, 94.7 Kumu. Uh, and I'm there with Sunway, who plays in a band with Todd. Uh, also, uh, highlife808.com for Kyle. Yeah. And uh, locationshawaii.com for John. And right now... We, we've never had a person playing saxophone for the High Session Podcast, which is why we needed this man to come on. Definitely one of the premier saxophonists in uh, on Oahu, but I would say, I would venture to say in Hawaii. Um, his name is Tad Yukumoro. He is a saxophonist, teacher, arranger, dad, husband, <laughs> um, rock, star. Shochu, rock star, shochu aficionado. Uh, he also plays in Kalapana. Uh, he's with the, he actually runs the UH Saxophone Choir, so he's in charge of that group. And then, uh, of course, uh, they've got their album, Nocturnal. We're going to talk about all that stuff coming up in a little bit. You can also check them out on ToddYukumoto.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Todd Yukumoto. How's it, everyone? Woo-hoo. Devin, that was really good. You're like some kind of... You should know. do that for like a living or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm a professional at that or something. Almost like Nolan Hong already. <laughs> <laughs> must be an inside joke. It's an inside joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have our, no our friend <laughs> our friend uh, Nolan is the younger, better looking, yeah. more successful version of me. <laughs> we had him on the podcast last week with his wife. Uh, yeah. So he's he's into all the same like acting and MCing just and everything. More successfully. He's than a me. copycat of you. Well, yeah. I like yeah. to say that, but he's so much younger than me that I can't. You're original. Yeah. 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 OG baby. <laughs> anyway well, well Todd thanks for coming on the last time we saw each other although you didn't even know that you saw me <laughs> we were Kyle and I went to the Kalapana concert at the Blue Note last week it was awesome you guys did two shows we just did um, one show night, per yeah, one show a night Tuesday yeah for two nights right? yeah and uh, Todd was up there and just by chance <clears throat> Devin calls and like hey can, can Todd come on the podcast? I'm like, oh my God, yeah, I just saw him the other weekend. It was an amazing show. You guys Thank you. really like rock the house. Yeah. Thanks. That's a fun group to play with it every was, time. It was an amazing show, but it was also like really nostalgic, but sad too at the same time. <laughs> like I wasn't expecting how I would react when the videos came on of Milani and Mackie and DJ. Right. But man, I actually teared up at yeah. some point, you know, and, and the audio was so good. It sounded like they were there. Yeah. So, so Kyle, explain a little bit more about what, the Kalapana show, I guess, is that how you guys are going to do it from here on out? Like, no, think? this is just oh. a tribute to the the former members that have have passed on. Okay, well then, explain how it was done this time. And then, David, can you pass me the remote and turn on the? Oh yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Okay. How it was done this time was they had a video screen behind them. Yeah. And um, live previous performance <laughs> of the concert, but they took out the track 
right. of the music and put the vocals in. Mm -hmm. And the band live played along with the exactly yeah yeah with the vocals with, with the vocal so, track and then DJ's track yeah yeah and it was literally like they were there yeah you know? I, I did I didn't really know how that was gonna c come off or go but it was really good I mean yeah. It, it yeah it added a dimension although I gotta say I was really impressed with uh, Johnny doing the Mackie songs and mm -hmm. then I'm sorry I didn't remember um, Crossing Rain the the oh Jordan yeah, yeah Jordan, Jordan Yamanaka no but yeah. um Ma Malani's cousin um, oh Alden Levi oh, yeah. Alden oh, yeah. he was yeah. good too man dude yeah, yeah he Alden is amazing. really he, you good. can see hear that timbre in his voice yes. it kind of sounds like Milani yeah. Yeah, yeah which is really cool and where did he play before this like, in what band Al Alden stuff? just worked all over town he just duels and solos and we took him to Japan and right when Milani passed and that was the first time we did that. Uh, tribute type of video in concert and interesting like you said the first show we did was in Osaka and oh, we yeah. played uh, the video behind us on a large screen and we started playing and we're, we're playing along to the music then we looked in the audience and everybody was like this oh they're, yeah they're like weeping and the rest of the band we all got choked up we're just like oh man I, I don't know how we're gonna play and yeah, yeah. the entire audience was just like crying they're just watching us that was pretty moving yeah, i don't also. think i was the only one i think a lot of people felt it in that that, Bruno, that night you know yeah and i was wondering how did you guys feel it the first time you tried like yeah when we that we we were all stunned we were and we had a hard time playing who, that who put that together Gaylor? Gaylor put it together yeah, okay yeah very cool so i remember that i remember the first time i saw it was uh it was a week after he passed and it was because you guys were doing after the milani passed yeah, yeah. Wow. the week the week he passed the uh, Kalapana was uh, slated to play at the pineapple drop in Mililani. And so we thought they were going to cancel. And so when uh -huh. uh, Gaylord said, oh, no, no, we're going we're gonna to do it. I, I, I think I figured out something in order to be able to, to pull it off. And we'll, you know, we'll have Milani's voice on a couple of tracks. And I went, what? Mm -hmm. And sure enough, they did it. And the first time they did it, the whole audience was just like, what is happening right now? Because Gaylord used some sort of, technology to, mm. to take the voices out. But the one that was interesting for me to hear about was how they uh, put um, DJ's parts in, because right. that's guitar, yeah. right? And it's it's solos and you're, you're, I mean, I guess either way, I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're parts, so you can pull them out and put them in. Right. But to hear his guitar going is just, wow. Yeah, it was that's neat to see. pretty magical. I, I was gonna ask you on the technical side, how hard it, because I don't know about these kind of things, but how hard was it to like synchronize with them? Because there are points where you guys started off playing the music mm -hmm. and the voice joined in from mm -hmm. the screen. So yeah. how does that being timed? Gotta be some kind of track, right? There is a track going on. Yeah. So it's a lot of the weight falls on the drummer. They oh. they have to hear this intro of the song and they start it off. And for us, it's just playing in time with mm. the drummer, but he's got all that weight on his shoulders to have to... Make sure it doesn't go off. That was Stacy was playing with you guys. Stacy just did this one. The, yeah. the regular drummer Garen Poliahu. Oh, busy. Garen, yeah. yeah. But he, they're great. Yeah. Both of them are just great. Yeah. Dude, Garen Poliahu. I, I first met him when we did the Kiahi Vai. Um, Aaron Kimura. Do you know Aaron Kimura? I'm, I think I met him before. Okay, yeah. so Aaron Kimura and Garen are friends, and he said, "Hey, I got this drummer that's gonna come in and and do it." I'm like, oh, "Okay," and then uh, then Garen comes in I'm like. Whoa, this guy's like a time machine. Yeah, he's great. He's like right on the beat yeah. every because you time. can nowadays you can see it right on the um on the computer screen. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, back back in our days or whatever. Right. You you didn't have the visual, but and you see all his hits are like perfectly lined up with the like, whoa, man, this guy him and him and Stacy, they're both just perfect time, man. They're, yeah, it's amazing. Meticulous drummer. Yeah, but really, really um the nice thing is they have really good feel. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they yeah. can make things yeah. swing and move, it's you also had an amazing guitarist that that young kid playing. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Um, I think his name. Sorry about this. I'm so bad with names. Always. <laughs> uh, I think his name is Nick Brown. Mm -hmm. Young guy. I think he's only like twenty. So he looks like a kid. Yeah, twenty seven. How'd yeah. you find him? Gaylord found him. Gaylord does all the work, so he found, <laughs> found him. So we just show up. And it's like go, Todd, hey. here's the when the show is <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and back in that corner is our sax player. Don't bother him. So. <laughs> Since this concert ended, what is the future with Kalapana then? What do you guys have in store? I think they, they're they looking to 
I mean, we paid tribute to the to the members that have gone now. Mm -hmm. So I think they want to move ahead and and just keep the music alive and continue to play and fill in the fill in the spots with you know new newer players to to keep it going. Okay, that's my understanding. Okay, and there's no um, gig lined up right now with a date yet. Yet, Not or? yet. I think they want to start touring again next year in Japan. Oh, okay. yeah. I heard. I heard okay. that Japan really is. I mean, they're as big as they are here. They're <clears throat> as oh, yeah, yeah. bigger in Japan. Bigger in Japan. And so right? Japan like, is actually clamoring is for Kalapano yeah. to come back and yeah. and play. So yeah. you know, I gotta admit, initially I was kind of like, I don't know how they're gonna pull this off, or I don't know how it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it was gonna be decent because of Johnny and I knew he could sing, and so I didn't know right. who was gonna be part of the lineup, but. The songs are still there, man. They still feel great. Yep. You still yep. feel those like, oh, it's very enjoyable. Very good, enjoyable good. to have. That's, to have that's it. what we want. We just want the music to stay alive. It's too yeah. good to let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you might as well because yeah, people people enjoy, and that's the main. That's why you play live, right? So people, right. other people can enjoy. So if, right, like we're all Kalapana fans. I mean, I, I know you guys are too. But yeah. so am I. I grew up listening to that. So it's just a thrill to be able to play the music that music live and doing it for real yeah yeah i mean but, for you it must have been amazing growing up listening to it and then yeah. eventually being in the band right and and doing it for a number of years already yeah i remember uh the first tour of japan i was uh we're in the green room and milani goes so what's your favorite call upon a song and i go um actually uh kona days is one of my favorite he goes oh really oh well you know so little time so many hits <laughs> <laughs> well that was the other thing too i couldn't you know i know you guys had a lot of hits but sitting there you're like oh yeah i forgot they did this song and that song and that i mean it's Tons. an hour and a half yeah. just of hits like yeah. i knew every single song you guys did yeah yeah i was and even telling my wife this is the first concert you go to and you every single song from beginning to end you go i know this song i grew yeah, up with yeah. this song you can you know? sing along to yeah. it and, and it's just yeah, yeah. And, and and kyle's like a mega fan i'm a casual Call, and I knew every song, you know. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, then, yeah. There's more too, that, right? That we don't even get to. Oh yeah. So, oh, I, I hope we can bring all of those tunes back. You know, in concert, I think it'd be great. You know, it'd be fun. Is that you, you do concerts, but you say for this concert we're going to play Kalapana one. <laughs> the next concert we're going to do Kalapana two. Right. You know, and well, I mean, technically in concert you could probably do both albums and yeah, just say, okay, we're going to play both albums in their entirety. That's what mm -hmm. in it, didn't Def Leppard do that? At yeah, the Def Leppard did the uh, Hysteria when they came down here. The whole thing, right? And people got all pissed off because they were like, oh, where's Photograph? Because <laughs> but they didn't understand that the whole album was being played. Yeah. So you're playing all these uh, technically obscure songs yeah. that, like, if you're a deep dive. Def Leppard fan, you go, oh, okay, I know that song. But for Kalapana, there's songs that yeah, there's, is really good that doesn't have the the mm -hmm. the variety the right, right, that it deserves yeah, you know, right, right now, right. you know. Yeah, there's there's a bunch on the album that didn't get much airplay, but I absolutely love. Uh, mm. There was another song that Milani did, and the writing is just so beautiful. I I told him, I said, you know, every time you sing this part of the song, I mean, every time that lyric comes up, I said, I just weep. It's, what song is that? Uh. uh I can I can hear <laughs> the song Dev, in my head. The, make sure the video is going again. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Just to quell my obsessive. How does it go? It, it's it's called Tonight I'm Thinking of You. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of, right, what you. album is I that? I think that was um, three or Walk Upon the Water. It was one of the more recent ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. And then there's all the other stuff in between, like me and my shonen bowl. I take it wherever I go. <laughs> it's another <laughs> Milani too. Oh, really? Yeah. I like Leighton's Namet. Oh, yeah. That's right. Nathan's Lemon? Yeah. yeah. Nathan's Lemon. That's uh, Call Upon a Two. Yeah. That's what made me um, become a fan of DJ Pratt when oh, I yeah. heard yeah. that song. You yeah. Know? Well, that one, the, both of the songs that end the albums, Call Upon a One uh, is uh, Love Is Everything. Mm. So mm -hmm. that one, they just say, okay, DJ, go. Yeah. And you mm. hear him rip. But, you know, the, the, the other thing that's neat is, is having Todd there holding down the saxophone part. Because you, you don't realize, I think, how much that portion of it like the horn integral part of yeah it's an yeah. integral part yeah. of the yeah. songs it and is. you go huh well that's interesting because the the person who played on the albums uh -huh. i mean michael paulo i mean obviously he's a he's an amazing instrumentalist in his own right and does albums and stuff but he wasn't an official part of kalapana mm -hmm. but you almost right. like you can't hear 
you know, Black Night Sand Bird. without Hero or Nightbird yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And Todd can play all of those parts. But and the first album, I think the guy's name was Jackie Kelso. Oh, is it Jackie? Oh, yeah, okay. he's a studio musician. Oh, okay. It's just yeah, I think that was his name. I hope I got it right. How embarrassing. But uh, <laughs> then Michael came in for the second album. Yeah. So he was there pretty early. Yeah. And and came up with all those great solos. Oh man. I mean you can't you can't beat them. No. Uh, was this music something you already played before you joined the band? I think I used to fool around in high school, play uh Black uh, Sand and stuff. Not so much Black Sand, what's the for you I chase a rainbow. Oh, you know, you, you listen yeah. to the record and yeah. you, you cop it and yeah. go, Man, I'm gonna play this for some girl sometime. <laughs> <laughs> never worked though. <laughs> it never worked. <laughs> well, as a casual guy being there, I was really impressed with with you i mean you get the crowd going yeah. with your solos and stuff and it just adds another dimension and you got that wireless mic thing going True. so you can he went through the crowd mm -hmm. and went all over the place and played your solos don hi fi do while you're yeah. passing yeah. us no, it's just, it's just bump. <laughs> yep. yeah yeah it, that's a that was something that michael does M michael is paulo is so such a dynamic player and he he works the crowd he goes to the audience and I, I was always afraid to go into the audience and just the tour before i went to japan with them michael went in the crowd and they said he was playing for some big guy like a the guy looked like a sumo wrestler and he picked up michael by the head like that and held him <laughs> and then i asked like dj what did michael do he goes oh he kept playing but he was like trying to get out of the guy <laughs> and the guy just put him down and i was just like i don't want to go in the audience <laughs> but then uh we were playing i think in tokyo and i would just straddle the edge of the stage because i didn't want to go out yeah and, and then uh, milani came behind me and shoved me into the audience oh my god <laughs> so, like milani <laughs> yeah so i had to do it ever after that yeah no you closing the show and you walking around the audience yeah. at, in the in that um that last segment yeah it really it really ties everything together because you bring you bring the band into the audience that's cool you know? so yeah i really enjoyed that I mean, i'm you've glad. been doing it for years after, yeah you know, i'm so. glad I'm, and people always talk about how they enjoy that part yeah so i'm like oh, that's good i mean that's the whole point is to share it with everybody yeah so if they like it then that's cool until someone picks me up by the head <laughs> <laughs> then i'll revamp that well people are just laughing because they, yeah because the the band when you guys were playing because I mean, you've been with you were with them for 15 yeah years, about there, right? about yeah. there. but you know they're they're kind of like the eagles like milani would be dancing around on stage mm -hmm. but you know everybody like dj he'd just stand there and he'd just play yeah right yeah um milani would dance a little bit but majority of it was them standing there and singing right it's not you know it's mm. not like this gigantic show where fireworks and all kinds of stuff mm. and they're getting the crowd involved and all that well, stuff well milani did move around a lot he did he yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> but yeah. it was you know it was up to todd but that's, to sort but that's of, what, yeah, yeah but that's like todd yeah. like he makes yeah. that he puts that extra little flair on yeah. it that makes it interesting. It was, it was really but he does nice it with, touch. but he does it with everybody he plays with because he also plays with Sunway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, and and he's kind of the go-to guy uh, if you need a really good saxophonist. It's like okay, we're gonna call Todd to come and have him do this. So I mean, that, it's one of the reasons I wanted to have him here because I'm sure he must have tons of stories of all the different people that he's played with. Yeah, I guess so. I was trying to think about it. Um, it it's just I've been fortunate to be able to work with so many different people and different bands things that i never thought about but um i so i got to work with kalapana and uh, henry capono and manau company uh fiji uh with uh Kaloi kai and it's like it's a funny. who's who man you know, I, yeah crazy. local and then uh, there were some other national people that i got to work with too which is it's, it's just really a blessing to be able to work with all these people but uh there's a lot of stuff that we've done in the studio and i don't think i've actually met a lot of the people because they'll send me the mm. tracks mm. i'll write out horn parts go into the studio and record it and we never meet anybody so that and coupled with my poor memory even if i did meet them so <laughs> i'll go to I get a call from a artist and they say oh can you uh you know play with us here's a list of songs so i'll write out charts and then i go to the gig and I said, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Todd. He goes, oh, no, 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 I met you. I go, oh, yeah, where was that? He goes, when you did our first album. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> great. Um, I'll just be in the corner. <laughs> just, just leave me there. But that's always, that's happened many times. Poor memory. You got to go with the nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see yeah. you. Nice yeah. to see you. Then you, can't, you can't. And then as you're shaking hands, you realize it's again. And you go, nice to see you. 
again. <laughs> and they got to go at the, hey, how's it? Yeah, how's it? How's it? <laughs> how's it, yeah. How's it yeah. works with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Todd, where did you um, first get your love of playing? Where did you learn to? Yeah, I first learned to play uh, ukulele. Roy Sakuma Studio. Oh, and that was, I, I was uh, in elementary school and I think it was in fourth grade. We found out that I could maneuver on the ukulele fairly easily. Uh -huh. So I think my parents were just so excited that there was something I could finally do because up to fourth <laughs> grade, I wasn't good at anything. And uh, and that continued through life too. But, but so they sent me for lessons and then I got into band, King Intermediate. Okay. And I and, uh, wanted to playing band that was a thing to do back there that was before yeah. iPhones and computers so uh, I wanted to play an instrument that could play classical jazz rock and roll that could do everything right mm -hmm. that's the instrument I wanted so uh, I chose saxophone luckily and that instrument still survived so did that um, and then you went Kalo high school uh, sorry castle high school castle and then C C C. <laughs> yeah, Castle. Yes. Castle yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> anyway. yeah, Castle High School. And then um, after high school, I was really worried because all I was good at was band. That's all I, <laughs> the rest of the classes tanked. So I, I luckily got into UH and I tell my students this. I said, you know, when I got to UH, I knew I had to major in something, but it wasn't going to be music because music was too hard. Mm. It was oh. just too hard. And I heard great players there. And I was like, yeah, but I don't belong in the music department. Just amazing players. It, the first one was Nathan Avia. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, he was yeah. playing in the yeah. courtyard with this uh, trumpet player. And they're playing jazz stuff. And I was standing in the music department with my stuff. I'm like, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> I suck. I don't belong here. I, I shouldn't be in music. What am I doing here? <laughs> so I tried and miserably looking to several other majors at UH. After my... Uh, fourth semester, I had to just buckle down. So I just took a bunch of liberal art classes. And then I told my parents, and then, then my grades came up. And I told my parents, you know what? I can't do anything. So I think I'm going to go into music. And they were like, okay, well, we support you. Good luck. Hmm. But I had kind of found my groove at that point. Mm. So after that, it was, it was all good. So well, a lot of musicians right now, they have side jobs that's not related to music but your sure. your jobs is all around music Again, you yeah know? i'm lucky i'm lucky that i have uh i get to play in the Royal hawaiian band that's mm -hmm. a that's a city job that's a full-time so gig too. full-time job yeah. so i'm i'm able to have a living as a musician and then everything on top of that is just gravy you know mm -hmm. playing playing with other people and then teaching at the university is uh you know that's all good it I, I wanted to model myself after uh, there was a great classical saxophonist who taught at the Paris Conservatory. His name is Marcel Mule. And he played in the government band called the Republican Guard Band. And he taught at the Paris Conservatory with very high level stuff. Mm. So I thought, well, look, I'm not Marcel Mule, but if I could teach at the university and play in the Royal Hawaiian Band, that that would, I think, be a pretty well, good thing. Yeah. What? Where, where does the Royal Hawaiian Band play like regularly? Everywhere. All over. They're they're everywhere. Right. So Every weekend they're, they're just filled with gigs yeah. you've got to do. And yeah. that's why it's a full-time gig because you guys yes. are all over the yeah. place. We're, we're, we work Wednesday through Sunday and just about every holiday on the book minus oh, yeah, Christmas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving, and New Year's. But other than that, we're there. So we we're out. I think we do like over 300 performances a year. Jeez. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. What is yeah. the majority of... What what kind of music is it? Um, it's still... We have some traditional Hawaiian music that came from the monarchy, right? Mm -hmm. So that music is still alive through the Royal Hawaiian Band. And then we have... We can do contemporary stuff. We just did a big concert at Hawaii Theater. And we had three guests. Uh, uh, Nate Alviao was one. And hmm. Amy Hanailii. Wow. And then uh, there was a Hawaiian group. I'm going to get killed for not remember their name, but uh, they're, they're a fantastic trio. And so we Nui? backed them up. Huh? Nui? Was it Brian them? Um, Tolentina? Zach. Uh, oh, oh, oh yeah. uh, Keho. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you should, you should have three dudes playing Hawaiian music. Like, oh, okay, ho. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, ho. Although I haven't really been hearing them around mm. town lately. I don't know if they're working on uh, something or, or teaching. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and part of it is I'm just out of it too. But yeah, yeah. he okay. just does his thing. Yeah, just do my it, thing. 
Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, man, 300 gigs are that, that, over, that's over easy. Yeah. And, and he has to do it in white pants and a white shirt with a red sash. <laughs> right. I, I just changed before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, with the sax playing and you playing with all these different bands and different mm -hmm. genres, if you had to choose a band to play with for the rest of your life and the type of music, what would it be? Oh, that's that's tough. I, I, I what mean, do you enjoy playing the most? I love all of it. Oh. That that's the thing. Like so, I always like to compare music with food. Uh, that's why I need to go on a diet. But uh, <laughs> I, I love I love it all, and it keeps it interesting always. Like I'll I'll do a, like a a rock group one night, and the very next night I have to do a classical concert, mm -hmm. and then maybe a jazz thing, reggae band. Uh, it it just keeps it interesting, like food, right? I mean, I love pizza, but I can't eat Not it for every three, day. three yeah. meals a day. Yeah. I mean, well, I have, but <laughs> but yeah. So it just keeps things interesting. But not many musicians have that ability and flexibility to play all this kind of different music. That's you know? true. I guess I, I get it, it's just a matter of what you want, I think, mm -hmm. and that that for me keeps keeps my batteries charged so so a lot of time when you do have a new band like say you're going to play with uh, sunway one night mm -hmm. but it but not sunway it'll be a new person do you write everything out depends or, or you, it depends okay. how intricate it is i've been working with uh um uh, mike piranha and oh, yeah, uh, yeah, steve uh -huh. inglis yeah and because i'm not familiar with their songs i'll just have to chart out the whole thing for myself so that mm -hmm. i know where we are in the song oh yeah. Okay. That's where. Yeah. That's that's, that's a kind of a tough when you play, work with so many people. Uh, it's hard to remember everything that that they do. <laughs> right? like, but, I'm not so good with the names. I don't know about songs, man. <laughs> 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 I gotta write all this stuff. Up. But, but faces. Again, I don't yeah. remember faces yeah. either. So that's tough. But the the um as a sax player, it actually is not as bad too, though, because you can chart it out and you can see where you come in and come out. You know, versus if you have to memorize the lyrics and right, or actually you know, play the chords the whole way. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'd be in trouble. You can kind of pop in and pop out yeah. when you, when you need to. Well, how often do you, is it just ad libbing when, when you're on stage with the sax? Um, I think a, a large majority of it is you know when they say solo, then yeah. then it's all improvisation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, okay. So wait, 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 wait. So when you're out in the <laughs> audience, uh -huh. they got a clock on and you're walking through, right? And then you know you play as long as. Right. possible because right. you're walking through the you're you're just riffing them at that yeah point then. yeah and the hard part is if i try to give somebody a high five then i only have one hand working. yeah mm -hmm. so the the amount of licks that i can play gets really neutered right there i'm just like <laughs> and then I, I, that's why i mean i'm really not looking at faces so much i'm playing and i see a high five i'm like okay how do I free this hand? Okay. So, <laughs> but that was the most impressive part is like he's high fiving, you know, people, yeah, yeah. you know, and he's still playing. He's like, like he stopped, you know. My brain stops. I'm like, oh, step, yeah. step one, hand <laughs> up, two. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, okay, th this is a what kind of saxophone? This is yeah. a um, uh, alto saxophone. How alto long have saxophone. you had that instrument? Uh, gee, probably about 20 years or so, yeah, at least 20 years, probably longer. Well, it's, it's, it's yeah. And it's, it was, it's, it was secondhand. It was built in the 1960s. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the classic, if you're a saxophone geek, uh, Mark six saxophones are kind of the, the Mecca, I guess like, uh, like 54 Strat, everyone wants to, mm, you know, something yeah. like that. So this is the heyday of saxophones, the 1950s, 1960s. What summer. makes that one so special? The tone? Tone, the, uh, the feel when you're playing it. Uh, they're very coveted instruments. I, I own, I own all, all Mark sixes actually. So, oh, okay. wow. so, so is this your favorite one right here? Uh, no, it's the one I had with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to stay in the car, but Devin said, bring it. <laughs> uh, okay, letting, so, so I wasn't, let, yeah, I wasn't letting him have yeah, that seat in the car. Can't right. get away with it, just leaving it in yeah. the car. So when you, when you play in, in the key of A, mm -hmm. uh, it's just different. So you can play any key, it's just the fingering is different. Right. It's not like a harmonica where every harmonica is a different Yeah, that's key. right. So, right. I mean, if you're in the key of A, I'm in the key of F sharp. It's a transposing instrument. Oh, I see. <clears throat> Man, okay, but when you play like a, a regular size, so a tenor sax or something, it, it's in the key of everything. B flat. So, so every oh my god. So if you're in the key of A, <laughs> I'd be in the key of B. Yeah, oh, that just seems so complicated. Well, it comes with the territory. Yeah. 
Yeah. I have a stupid question. Uh, all right. So go. I'm your guy. You know, we, lo- we learned Tonet, right? In, in, yeah. In yeah. elementary school. You know, that recorder? Recorder. Yeah, recorder. Yeah, recorder, tonet, recorder tonet, whatever. Tonet. My right. son's doing that right now. How, how similar is the f- the fretting? It's actually we- very similar. Really? Yeah. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's very similar. Okay. Although it's the, this is a transposing instrument. So if I play, if I finger C, which is C on the recorder, it's going to sound uh, a different note. It's going to sound an A. Huh. Oh, it's confusing. Or, or E flat, really. I should get that right, but. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think about like uh, just the mental gymnastics of going through that. Every uh, you, you do it often enough. It just comes naturally. You know, I guess so, r- Riding yeah. a bike. He likes, he likes to say, the thing about Todd that's <laughs> slightly maddening is he always downplays how hard it is to yeah. do what he does and how good he is at it. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you kind of sit there, like when he plays with Sunway, right? He sits in the corner and he's just, you know, he's kind of rocking his shakers or whatever. And then he, you're, we're watching him play. I don't know, like what you won't do for love, right? Which uh-huh. is a, which is a, sax thing. That, that, that everybody yeah. kind of knows, right? Yeah. But then you go, okay. So if I'm performing the song with them or, or Sunway's performing the song, you just try to turn to him and go, okay, Todd, go. And then he just takes it you know like it takes the song from here to like here right and just carries on and you know that none of it is rehearsed i mean he'll he may do a couple licks that are sort of you know he's done them before Mm -hmm. but it only serves to help him get to a point where he can sort of take off and then you go okay a little bit more (laughs) (laughs) and he'll go okay and then he'll just and it's it's fantastic because it's always very well uh, it's very well versed. It's always very well thought out, you know. And then he, <laughs> and then I've I've learned now because I've I've been fortunate enough to to sit in with them, to <laughs> to have him do this because <laughs> when he does this, it's like okay, take it away now. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm tired. tired. I'm tired. Can you take please? it away, please? <laughs> There's another verse. Do the verse. Do the verse. <laughs> oh. There's a lot of guys that do that, though. There really are. There are a lot of great players around. So I don't know, man. Every How time you it? every time you start playing, people go, "Holy shit!" I mean, it's just you can't help yourself. Even even on something like Black Sand, where everybody knows yeah. where those notes are, like you'll you'll play it. But I, I just I like as a musician, I always think like. You know, like there's people who can solo, like like DJ, right? He can yeah. solo on the guitar, and I know yeah. how hard that is. And I'm like, is it just as hard on the sax as it is on the guitar to know where to hit you know all the fingering and stuff and now you're telling me that he's not even in the same key so like the whole finger changes based on the key and and whatnot it's uh, it, i mean you you think that well you know black sand is in the key of d minor so you play d minor but for me it's b minor it's it's not a it's not a big thing just same gotta know your keys and, uh, <laughs> it's it's all right yeah 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 i guess so well, what throws me off is I have a um, so Jake Shimabukuro plays Europa mm-hmm. in D minor. Mm-hmm. Herbota Jr. plays Europa in G minor. Right. <laughs> and then my friend Darren plays Europa in B minor. Uh-huh. And I play with all three of those guys. And I'll always be like, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I'm with Herb now. What? Because <laughs> not all the chords change, right? Right. The, the thing. So, yeah, that screws me up. That's like working with different singers. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna do. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. What you want to do for love? We're doing it right. in A minor now or A now. Yeah. Some, or, sometimes that gets tricky because if you know the the iconic horn introduction, yeah. they say, "Okay, we're like careless whispers." Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. But we're gonna do it in the key of G. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now I need a minute because you can't just capo it up. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You have to. Oh, we have to the whole. <laughs> yeah, sounds... you got to make the adjustment in your head, yeah. and then wow. How often is um. What is your rehearsal schedule like with different bands and stuff? Or are you like John? You just show up and play on stage. <laughs> oh, it just depends on the band. Uh, yeah, Sunway will have you know, a couple of rehearsals before big gigs. Uh, different groups, maybe one rehearsal before, depending how intricate the music is. For like s- any other group. For for a group like Kalapana, is it just like ah, oh, we just go play Thursday? No, no, we'll no. usually have at least one or two rehearsals, oh, yeah? especially if we're bringing in like new performers, like this True, last the concert. guys, the people that set in. Yeah, yeah for so first we time. had to have two rehearsals. Mm-hmm. But 
It, it's it, it's fine. I did mean, you guys rehearse at the venue or did you guys work somewhere else? No, somewhere else. Yeah. So. Oh, do you get to rehearse at Apex? We we did. We did. Oh, yeah. so that, that is cool. Apex uh, was a studio in Hawaii. Kai. It was. Oh. It's a, Apex. Sorry, yeah. I keep calling it Apex. Oh, the Kanye one. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's secret studio. Oh, oh yeah. No, I don't know how secret it is, but well, yeah, I mean, everybody, all the musicians know about yeah. it. Yeah, it's like they have like just an amazing board, and every everything at the console is just amazing. And Wait. then you go upstairs, and it's the same duplicate thing. Wow, everything is who exactly owns, the same. Who owns that? Um, before Avex, it was a guy named I think Tetsukamura. He was part of a, a a rock band in Japan, and hugely successful. So, so they just built it so they can come here and record. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. the double the doubling of the equipment because when they would track or record the players, then uh -huh. they would go to mix it later. They wanted it to be exactly the same, so oh. you go to the mixing room and it's the exact same console and everything wire wow. for wire. Wow! <clears throat> so that there's no change. Wow. I see. And That's then I heard crazy. though that guy when he built it, he also had a studio in California and one somewhere else or one or two other in the world. And they said they were all kind of the same. Oh. Is, is that the place where like Beyonce recorded her albums and stuff? Is that the one? Maybe. I, mean, I don't know. I'll call her up and find out. Okay. <laughs> do that. So there's big time guys that play oh, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Really big time people have been there. Wow. Yeah. It, it's crazy. When you're there, is there like something on the walls? No, you can't. You would never know that it's there. No, it's really? a very high end studio. They don't advertise like that. I think that is. I think that is the one. Like, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, Jay Z recorded there. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Like all these really big name people, oh, they shit. they go in and they love to record there. They come to Hawaii, they record tracks, mm -hmm. and then they leave, and they always go to that studio. Yeah. Because it's like that. It's state of the art stuff, but. You'd never know. Like you walk into the house and you go, oh, just a house. Well, you're yeah. on the water, but the, the, when you're in there, are you? do you know that you're on the water? Is it like a big there's There are big windows yeah. that you can see. And then I think, that must be nice too, just looking yeah, out of the view. And that's why I think, I don't know if I can talk about it, but hmm? Dr. Dre would come there and they said, why do you come here? Like, you know, you've got the best studios anywhere, LA, New York, like that. And he goes, take a look out the window. He goes, hmm. see that view? I don't get that when I'm in the yeah. other studios. I only see cement walls. He yeah. said, this is reason enough. Man, yeah. gotta nice. tell that to my kids. What? I always tell them, like, you know when we drive by Sandy Beach? I'm yeah. Like, you know people pay tens of thousands of dollars to fly here just to look at this? You guys are sitting in the back seat staring at your phone. <laughs> You know, I'm like, yeah. just enjoy the view, you yeah, know, like right. as we're driving around. Youth is wasted on the young. I know, I know. We have uh, friends that hate sand. What? And we're like, you're looking at me for? No, because it's mutual friends. Oh yeah, no, and true. they go, that's "What true. do you mean you hate sand? You're born in Hawaii. You know, you're you're in Hawaii. You're living in Hawaii. You gotta learn to like sand. Mm -hmm. You know, everywhere. I, you know, I never yeah. really thought about it too much, but I, I tell this story all the time. I was in Pleasanton, California, which is a nice area. I mean, it's, it's nice, Pleasanton. It's pleasant. <laughs> yeah, it's Pleasanton. But we were we were <laughs> we were doing some some uh uh one of those like Hawaii days or something like that, but. One day I'm like, oh, I'm going to walk outside the hotel and just go for a walk and see what's out there. And I walked outside and I looked down the street and it's just like uh, strip mall, neighborhood, strip mall, freeway. And I looked the other way, it's strip mall, you know what? It, and it just goes on forever, Flat. you know, yeah. like forever. Yeah, so I can, I can tell, like, and that's Pleasanton, right? I can imagine if you're in mid, middle America and it's just corn everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah as far it's as just corn mile. and flat yeah. you know just yeah. to, to see something different with the water and the sand it's i can imagine this oh yeah i mean if i didn't live here and i came here for the first time i would cry yeah. probably just mm. seeing this mm -hmm. kind of beauty you know yeah. right right yeah so i'm gonna uh, bogart the show for a minute and talk about something that i'm very close to yeah okay, sure. is a uh, nonprofit foundation that we help start up called the Hawaii Saxophone Foundation. Okay. We're a nonprofit uh, group designed to promote saxophone performance and education. Mm. Nonprofit. So we take donations. <laughs> take anyone's donation. It's it's good. But what we do is we have supported the local band programs because I'm not sure if you guys came through band programs. Back in the day, they used to get a budget from the school. Mm -hmm. Now, most all band programs get zero dollars from the school. Wait, what, really? what happened to save the music with like Cheryl Crow and stuff? 
That didn't I don't know. Work. I didn't. They're saving different people's music. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're saving. <laughs> I mean, back in the '90s, that was a big deal, right? You know, and like, Gloria Estefan. Well, that, that, that was 30 years ago, man. I guess. Oh, man. I guess so. Thanks. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, <laughs> and truly, I mean, That's some of the right. kids, some of the kids are playing instruments from that long ago. Well, yeah, I'm from so. Pro City High School, where it was huge. Where band is the the well, the thing was, there, right? Was, so yeah. they're not getting any funding either, even with no. Them. So they they have they have to have their own band boosters and and mm -hmm. nonprofits ah. to help fundraise. But our organization will help anyone in the state. That's oh. that's what we're designed to do, and part of what we do is we bring in uh, we put in master classes. If we find out somebody is coming to town, like say at the Blue Note, and then we mm. ask them, "Would you do a master class?" It's free to the public. We mm -hmm. always put on free master classes, and we pay the clinicians to do presentations. So we've had some big big guys here, um, Pete Chris Lee, who used to play in Tonight Show band. Mm. Uh, my hero on saxophone, David Sanborn. He did a master class oh, yeah. for us. Wow. Yeah. That was he was very yeah, I gracious. Know David too. Sanborn is, yeah. Yeah. And Joe Lovano, Grammy Award winner. Uh so and then we've also helped fund the getting instruments, like instrument cases, uh, to the schools. So that's what that's what we do. They also the, the foundation also helps support the U eight saxophone choir when we have uh, expenses like bringing in guest artists they'll help cover costs with that and then as of about five years ago we finally started the high school uh, Hawaii high school saxophone ensemble oh, so nice. it's uh, high school students uh, we audition them and we perform a concert with high school students and they are fantastic the high school there's so much talent here in Hawaii right yeah. the high school kids are just really wonderful students they come in and there's there's another big orchestral student high school orchestral program here in Hawaii, and they cater to every instrument except saxophone. Saxophone is not part oh. of the orchestra. Oh man! Yeah, so we finally got this thing off the ground, and uh, the band directors that I work with who are helping do all this too. They all this one that played saxophone say the same thing. Man, I wish I had this when I was in high school. I said, mm. me too. Mm. But we finally got it going. So the Hawaii Saxophone Foundation helps to support these groups. Is so, there a website that people can... Um... Yes. Hawaii, if you do a search, uh, Hawaii Saxophone Foundation, it'll come up. Uh, but our website is HiSaxFND. So H-I-S-A-X-F-N-D dot org. Okay. And you can find out what's going on with that over there so i'm very i'm very proud of that group yeah, yeah that's, awesome. that's cool and we'll put it in the description and stuff cool. too so people can click on the link if they they so feel like it thank you and oh, it's I funny it's funny too because when you think about it um you know besides that guitar or drums or something like saxophone is the next sort of sexy in mm. thing right all like, around instrument yeah like all around i mean if you yeah. if you're talking about a horn instrument i mean trumpets are cool but when you play the sax yeah Right? It's that chicks dig the sax, man. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's interesting that, that they would not give that as much. Now how do you attention. how do you navigate as a because now you can practice as a saxophone player by yourself, mm -hmm. but it's hard to do a one man show gig as a saxophone player. <laughs> For so, me, it is. I, so, I'm never well, that. Kenny G did it. I yeah. guess, but uh, yeah. So what, what is, what is the, yeah. the 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 pathway for a sax player? You go to you play in band college band it helps yeah. and then you find people who need sax players and you yeah kinda, i guess that's, yeah. that's how you do it huh? but the good thing about it is that that instrument you can play like you said reggae mm -hmm. rock mm -hmm. you know yeah uh, everything you can play with that instrument yeah you know? yeah that's that um i'm i think i chose the right instrument yeah it's allowed me to work with so many different people and organizations i'm just I'm happy about that. Besides the ukulele, is there any other instrument that you know that we're not aware of? I I seen you play the, the shaker and the triangle and all that. Oh, and he and he sings Barber slap. Barber slap. really really high too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He can <laughs> sing. He can sing harmonies. I see, like you were singing the business. harmonies at the concert. Yeah, yeah right? that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I play a little bit of flute and clarinet as well. Uh, oh. That's kind of comes with the territory. If you want to be a working musician, mm -hmm. then you have to have some doubles ready to go. No, when you play the flute and the clarinet, is it the same fingering and stuff? It's like similar. That? It's similar, but uh, I wouldn't call myself a great soloist on clarinet or flute, <laughs> not at all. But um, yeah, that's that's a that's a good 
the more you can play, the the better off you'll be. And I think that's kind of been the model for for my musical uh, life is that I just try to get as much different musical experiences under my belt and that hopefully when I actually have something to play, there would be a little bit more depth and maturity in, into what you're playing. Mm. Uh, that's kind of my my From my model yeah, 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 kind yeah. of thing, what I try to do. And where's your favorite place when you guys go to Japan to visit? Izakayas. Ah. Yeah, any izakaya. So... <laughs> why are, you gotta make sure you gotta make yeah, sure exactly. they're shochu. Why are shochu there, and yeah. not sake? Oh yeah, I, yeah, that's I a good wish I, I loved nihonchu or sake. I I try. I drink one, and that's that's about it. But shochu, I after I almost died drinking it. I, I <laughs> there was a Kalapana tour that I was really not doing well. But uh, <laughs> that's when I first got introduced to shochu. So I said, well, wait, 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 well for, what is shochu? It's like yeah. vodka. It's yeah. a distilled oh, okay. spirit okay. made out of any grain. So wheat or just rice or my favorite is imo shochu. Uh, it's a sweet potato shochu. Oh. In Japan, you can find it made out of chestnut, sugarcane, any kind of you know grain. It's, it's great. But So I really decided to focus and learn what is this shochu <laughs> thing because I almost died drinking it. It was horrendous. Um, <laughs> Wait, you, you had a bad experience or you just... I was sick for two days. Really? They call it futsukayoi. Two days sick, two day hangover. Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. So, um, how much did you drink that night? I wish I could tell you. You don't even remember. I it was it was. Yeah, reached a certain point, you just black. Yeah, out I was and... I was hanging onto the tree because the world was spinning too fast. So did you play? No, while you're I, sick? luckily I had the, the next two days off. Oh. But yeah, I was I was hurting. <laughs> but so I decided to focus and learn about shochu and. And now I actually I really love shochu. He's and like the form. He's like the foremost expert on shochu. <laughs> well, not really, but I'm, you I'm and, a fan. You and Harry Ladera. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy Harry Ladera is a bass player. He plays with Sunway, and uh, he actually played with Kalabana too. So mm -hmm. it was cool. But we have a little podcast. Well, not, it's not a podcast. <laughs> we have a YouTube channel. It's small, but really? it's called the Hawaii Shochu Brothers, and oh, we try different yeah. shochus. Yeah. And one kind of I think we got a little bit of credibility is that during the pandemic. Uh, Asao-san from, he's one of two representatives of Ichiko company. Mm. He contacted mm. me and said, is there a way we can promote our shochu during this pandemic? Because he had to go back to Japan. Mm. So I said, yeah, let's let's do an interview. You know, we did. And so we filmed it. It turned out to be a little bit long. So it's like three episodes. But we're talking about Ichiko Shochu on his show. So I thought that should give us a little bit of credibility. And yeah, sure, but sure. we have a, just a few shows up there. I'd love to do more and love to bring in guests. So when you guys are ready, we can film. These are, shochu these are the guys you got. I don't really no, drink. But, so. uh, the, the, I'll this, try this it, thing. I don't. I don't drink a lot of shochu. Right. My wife so, likes shochu. But I. But I asked Todd. Hey Todd, um, is there a shochu I should try? Like, and you can you can ask him. Okay, I need one that's a little more on the dry side. I need one that mm. doesn't have that sort of. Because some of them, when you drink them, they burn going down. Yeah. <laughs> and they burn coming out. <laughs> but he he can tell you. Oh no! If you want one that's a little more mild, you know, try this one. Uh, if you want one that's got almost fruit notes to it, try that. It's really like how deep the knowledge is what, that they have on this thing is scary. What is the um, favorite way to drink it? Is it straight out of the bottle or no, you no, chill no, no, it no, no. or what do so, you do? The shochu should always, well, I'm going to say me, but then some of the Nihonjin <laughs> will get in my case. Like It should always be mixed. So oh. on the mm -hmm. rocks with some water and shochu. That's uh, if you want something refreshing, that's the way to yeah, do that's it. That's what they say. Yeah, water. Straight is yeah. too strong. Yeah, it's too strong. It's like drinking straight vodka. You know, it, and then uh, in the winter months, especially in Japan, they they get the shochu and they pour some warm water. You know, like sixty percent shochu, forty percent water, or fifty fifty. So hot or cold, it's still good. Yeah, it's delicious. Drink. Some some work better warm. Well, when like, you're storing it, do you store it in the refrigerator then? No, or you don't need to. It's a spirit, so it, it'll be okay at room temperature. Okay. But yeah, shochu is definitely my favorite. And then there's a guy in Haiva, Namihana, the Hawaii yeah, shochu that. company. When I was uh, 
my mom told me, he goes, hey, check a look. There's a guy in the newspaper. He's making shochu. I'm like, oh, we're going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be friends. <laughs> Ken Hirata and his wife, Yumiko, they're the sweetest people. They're just wonderful, sweet people. But, and we got to be friends. And he was kind of freaked out the first time I met him. I just came on a little too strong. <laughs> I was like, You're like that guy. Fan, fan <laughs> boying over like, his yeah, shochu. <laughs> I drank a lot of your shochu. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. He was rather nervous. And then I bought a case. And then two days later, I said, can I come by for some more shochu? And he was kind of worried. He goes, yes, you can come. Go back out to Haleva. So he goes, uh, did you drink all? He goes, it's, it's all gone already. It's all gone. He goes, I see. I said, I, I said, I, I gave it away. I gave it to friends. I drank one bottle. He goes, okay. Did you lie at all? On the, when, no, no. I gave, I, gave, gave, I, gave, <laughs> I, gave, I gave away five bottles. I drank one. Okay. And, but, but that was earlier on. And then I would always go back and, and pick his brain about shochu. So and he, if you ever get a chance to meet Ken and Yumiko, they're the sweetest people. They make great shochu also. But yeah, I'm, I'm such a fan of shochu. So that's why we started that, that, yeah. that YouTube what is it about? Uh, is it about the flavor of certain ones? Is it the fact that you only have to drink so much to get a nice buzz? Is it? I mean, what is the thing well, about it? Well, I like it because it's probably the cleanest alcohol of all alcoholic drinks. The healthiest alcohol. It is. And that's yeah. what uh, my podiatrist told me when we thought we had gout. But uh, <laughs> he goes, what do you drink? I said, I usually drink shochu. I said, yeah, you know, I drink a lot of it. He goes, oh, don't drink anything now. Turned out it's not gout though. So oh, thank you. So you're good to go. Yeah, I can drink it. You know, I tried mm -hmm. shochu before and I think I didn't like it because I wasn't mixing it with water. Mix it on the rocks. So rocks, maybe 50 or 40% water. Put the shochu in there and then sip it. And what's great, it's palatable with everything. It's, it doesn't interfere with anything. And some things like certain seafoods, emo shochu, it's just perfect with I'm gonna try that tonight. Mm. Remember that bottle I let you guys try, yeah. and you guys were like, yeah. I don't like shochu, but I let you guys try, and it was good. And my house, we were recording a it podcast. Was it was really it was smooth. smooth. Yeah, yeah. But that, I mean, but that was the thing. Like we, I was at a rehearsal uh, at Sunways for that thing, and he he always has a bottle of shochu with him. So I was you like, never know. Well, let me try. Be and he goes, <laughs> yeah, and he goes, he goes here. I'll make it the way that I that I drink it, and so he put the ice. And then he put the rocks and then he put the water. and then he No lemon, it. no nothing. Just no, straight. No, nothing. Rate. Just a yeah. straight. And then he goes, here. And I tried it. I went, wow, this is so smooth. It's crazy. And he's like, yeah, it's the, the shochu when it's done well. It's not supposed to be this thing that hangs really heavy. You drink yeah. it and then it's done. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But is there, a, uh, is there a specific one? Because you've showed a shochu that's really expensive yeah like yeah. you I'm know like some of them get really is, is there one that you recommend that's sort of in a normal man's range that yeah they can buy? if you want to drink uh the the barley shochu i think ichiko kurobin the the black bottle uh that's a really good one for wheat if you want emo shochu um there's one called ikomon which is one of my favorites it's a little bit pricey but we can get it here. It's it's very good. That's a sweet potato. One of my favorites. The mm. sweet potato. That's the yeah. That's the magic. And yeah. You get it. You get it. What Don Quixote or yeah, Don Quixote. Um, Times is car carrying several now because they're owned by um, Marukai. Oh yeah, right? yeah, that's right. So that's Marukai right. also has, but Don Quixote carries probably the biggest selection of shochu. Mm. Wow. There you go. Interesting. Yeah. Learned a lot all today. Right. All right. All right. We'll, we'll try that tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, Todd. We are at the portion of the podcast where we ask all our guests this question. Oh, no. If you were stranded on a desert island for the rest of eternity and could only take three albums with you to listen to for the rest of time, what would those three albums be? Jeez. I should have listened to more podcasts. For ideas. <laughs> I would say... It's supposed to be off the top of your head. So Okay, well... I think to keep the island flavor, I would have to go with one Kalapana CD, right? That's always a favorite. I would say maybe one of my teacher's CDs. His name is Harvey Patel. He's a great classical saxophonist. There's mm. so much to learn from what he does and what he plays. See, a lot of the musicians take something that they could, even Johnny Valentine had this, uh -huh. where he wanted to still learn. Right. While he was stranded on this island for, <laughs> for the rest of time. 
So it's interesting. Most of the normal, re- regular folk don't think like that. Mm. Yeah. No, they're trying to listen to enjoy. Yeah. The musicians are listening to learn. Learn, right. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. And so I would say for the third album, I would have to... That'd be tough. Um, now, if I wanted to feel good, I would say David Sanborn. Yeah. But if I wanted to say something to learn from, it would either be like a John Coltrane CD or... Mm. Or one of the great masters like Beethoven. So number three, I don't know. It'd be tough. What okay. are those guys? Okay. So wait, wait. So yeah. if you if you could bring an instrument on that island, uh-huh. but it you can't bring a sax, uh-huh. what would it be? A stethoscope. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, an instrument, like a musical instrument? Yeah. I guess. What would you want to perfect while you're on that island? Oh, perfect? Yeah. Ukulele, maybe? Mm. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Bring you back to your roots. Yeah. 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 Uh, real quick, um, can we get into the... Um, I, I just had two quick things because I know we're running short on time. Yeah, but uh, I wanted to talk about your classical uh, saxophone group. Oh, my if CD? You can. Yeah, just... Or no, the, no, no. The uh, UH well, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, the the uh, UH saxophone choir is made up of music majors, uh, college students. We also have some community members they come in some uh current band directors they're part of the group we put uh, put on a concert once in the springtime usually around march or april it's usually a pretty big concert we play a variety of music from strictly classical to pop and jazz music we also incorporate the hawaii high school saxophone ensemble to be part of that concert also try to bring in at least some kind of musical guests to keep things interesting in there but it's a uh, Basically, it's an orchestra of saxophone, hmm. just saxophone. So. And Todd, like, single handedly puts a lot of this. St- I mean, single handedly in the sense that it was, you know, it's kind of his baby and he, yeah. he makes it work. And that, that's the part that's really impressive because he gets saxophonists uh, from all over the place to sort of work together. And then you listen to them play and you go, wait, these are all saxophones? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Well, okay. Like and then, you know, it's, yeah, it's really, it's really fantastic. And then, my second question, real quickly, is what is it about David Samuel? Because I discovered David Samuel when I was in college. Mm. Uh, I think Change of Heart had come out. It was like yes, Chicago great. song and yes. stuff, right? Yep. And it was it was amazing because I, I listened to him play and it was like nobody else that I'd ever heard play saxophone. And no you know, we, we grew up with Kenny G. We grew up, you know, there's there's a guy's uh there's a guy named Eric Marienthal who's oh, yeah. really good. Everybody's great. heard, you know, those guys. But David Samborn just uh, Dave Cause even. I mean, but David Samba was a guy. What is it about him? Is it his tone? Is it the, the, uh, how prolific he is? Because he does a lot of albums too. Yeah, I I think with Sanborn, um, first, well, first and foremost, I think with any musician, if you are honestly about the music, somehow people get that. Mm. It transfers to people who aren't even musicians. And Sanborn is always about the music. He is just so focused on making sure it's musical. Mm -hmm. His sound, I first heard him when I was like a sophomore in high school, this trombonist of all people. He goes, hey, you should listen to this. You're a saxophone player. He put his Walkman on me. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. He goes, this is David Sanborn. I'm like, I've never heard a saxophonist like that ever. And now everybody wants to sound like Sanborn, Mm. but he was doing it back in the late 70s and 80s. So unique. And played with a ton of people. Uh, James Taylor, mm-hmm. right? Uh, mm-hmm. I know he recorded with Toto. Uh, I think David Bowie. All, just the who's who of great musicians. But Sanborn, I think, is he's just so uniquely himself. And I, I got a chance to ask him at the master class. Oh. I, I tried not to fanboy on him. <laughs> I, it was hard. It was hard. I was like nervous. Don't blow it. Don't piss him off. So, <laughs> I just asked him. You know, your sound was so unique. Nobody sounded like that ever uh, until you came along. I said, what What made you think or what guided you with that? And he just said, I don't know how to sound any other way. I just, <laughs> well, I just knew I wanted to be in music no matter what I did. And that's all I knew how to sound like. And that's what I do. That must have been neat to meet him though. Because, yeah. I mean, that's like a basketball fan meeting Jordan right. or like, 
us guys meeting Eddie Van Halen cool. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know? Very cool. No, but I mean, yeah. I, I I discovered him in college because a, a friend of mine was listening to him, and he was playing it while he was doing homework. And I went, who who is this? I've right. never heard anything like it. It is because Sanborn. It, it's it's like a jazzy thing, but then there's a funk aspect to it. There's a rock aspect to it. He he moves in genres while he's doing a song, and you go, what? And then every time he plays his sax, it sounds like it's something he just sort of came up with. And I'm sure it's not. I'm sure he marks out everything that he's going to do. But I've seen him play, I think, three times live now. I, mm -hmm. I saw him down at um, the Shell. Uh, I saw him at this... I don't know what the heck it was. It was this one venue where there's like a volcano and stuff, and it was him playing. <laughs> I and I went Magic Polynesia, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, every time he plays, there's something new that you discover with what he's doing, and you just still going, what What is happening right now? I went, uh, yeah, I think um, when I was there, uh, I forget who was there, but it was yeah, I mean, it was just fantastic, and and it it gave me a new appreciation for uh, saxophone music. Because people think the saxophone is the part that you hear when you're hearing what you want to do for love or careless whisper right. or something, right? And this is not that. It's mm. it's something completely different, and and it 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 opened my mind up to a different style of music, which I thought was really cool. And I think that's kind of what he expects you to do. But he's, I mean, he's played with um, uh, Bob James, uh, and also um, he did a some, couple things with like. Uh, Al Jarreau and stuff oh, like yeah. that, and yeah. you know, I'm he, sure he's played with everybody. Oh, dude, he's just, yeah. but he's he's fantastic, and he's I don't know when I when we met him, he was a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just a pure musician. Yeah, just very very cool. Kind of like Todd. Nah, yeah, Todd's cool. Play with everybody, just kind of do his thing. I was trying not to be too like, you know, whoa, because I just saw him on Tuesday, you know, but oh, yeah, but I mean, you see Todd play, and you go, okay. I was like, damn, that guy's good. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for having me. See, you yeah. went like an hour and 15 minutes, bro. Yeah. Awesome. And just to let our, our uh, audience know, so we have next week off. Yeah. Only two more podcasts before the end of the year. Wow, we, that's it's, crazy. It's crazy. We, yeah. This year has flown by, but thanks everyone for your support. Thank you. And, can um, we? Is it possible to Patreon something with Todd? Well, oh, yeah. Or is that going to be can, difficult? Right? Uh, I was going to say, you know, no, no Patreon today. Oh. Only because I have to, I have to, Oh, no, you got to go. No, 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 no. I, I got to like lie down or, or do something. Because like, you're back. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of sitting on my hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to just prop myself up. We can lay you out here on this. Yeah, 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 on the table. We'll lay you out here and then we'll, yeah. we'll do the feature. And we'll, you well, either that or, I mean, is there, maybe no, but we're, we we're gonna get him on high sessions or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. that'd be kind of fun. It'd be neat to Actually, have him do know, a solo. You know, maybe come back for a social podcast. You know what would be nice podcast. if Sunway would come back on and we could do another Sunway and bring Todd. Oh. Yeah, but then we'd have to get the rest of the band. Yeah. Do a high sessions with that. Ooh, oh. That might yeah. be good. Get the whole band playing. Yeah. yeah. Session. Well, I don't know if we can fit them all in this oh, room. Like yeah, we'd have... Oh, no, no. Like, like talking about a high session, session session. Oh, right, that yeah, kind. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Thank you. We will see, see you. you next week.